Dr. Francisco de Souza in his visit to India in Noida is joining in now uh, to speak about uh, Cognizant, the road ahead and what lies ahead for the Indian IT industry. Frank, uh, always a pleasure to have you uh, with us and uh, congratulations uh, for a good set of numbers. It's been a good few quarters for Cognizant. My first question to you is uh, what lies ahead? You have guided for a growth of 9 to 10 percent for the calendar year 2017. Uh, uh, take us through the kind of visibility that you see in terms of the demand pickup in the environment and what are the chances of being able to beat that guidance? Kritika, uh, it's good to be with you. Um, as you said, we had a good, uh, a good quarter, a good start to the year. The first half of the year was very strong for us. Uh, at the end of the second quarter, uh, we took the lower end of our guidance range um, up. Uh, we're now forecasting revenue in the range of 9 to 10 percent. We feel good about um, the outlook uh, for the rest of the year. Um, and our growth um, has been quite broad-based uh, across uh, the industries that we serve. And it's been driven because our clients um, across the industries that we serve are now starting to deploy digital technology at scale. Um, and as digital becomes mainstream and our clients look to reinvent their business model, their operating model, and their technology models, uh, and do that all simultaneously, they're increasingly turning to Cognizant to help them with that journey. And as clients move to digital at scale, we are benefiting because of the investments that we've made. Hmm. Okay. You know, so if I were to look at the kind of growth that the sector and the industry has seen uh, over the last one year, can I safely say, purely based on your guidance, that uh, the calendar year 2017 is looking like a better year than calendar year 2017 based on the visibility? Well, you know, Kritika, you know, um, our, our guidance range is 9 to 10 percent. We, uh, we delivered a little bit less than 9 percent uh, last year. Uh, and so just, uh, you know, mathematically, uh, regardless of where we fall within our current guidance range, uh, we expect that we'll do a little bit better uh, this year than we did last year. So, you know, in terms of the order book, in terms of the visibility, Frank, where are the... digital now there are three areas that you are focusing on which includes operation technology and digital business but in terms of the sectors that are actually adopting to these digital technologies which stand out and which will be the focus areas for you in the next two years yeah Kritika you know first I would point out um, healthcare we see tremendous um, momentum in healthcare and that's based on investments that we've been making in healthcare for many many years and more recently with the Trizetto acquisition in 2015 we've got a very strong position in the healthcare market and uh, we continue to drive um, digital within healthcare and, and do that with our clients at scale so um, healthcare is a very strong um, uh, area for us at the moment uh, beyond that um, uh, you know, products and resources um, grew 13 uh, percent year over year in the second quarter, and communications, media, and technology uh, grew uh, even even more than that, uh, close to 17 percent year over year in the second quarter. So we are seeing uh, strong growth across those areas. Okay, so uh, you spoke about acquisitions, Frank. What is the outlook there? You've been making niche acquisitions, specific acquisitions that add to the business. Uh, uh, how much scale can you get from acquisitions in the near term? You know, it's always been the case, Kritika, that uh, our, our, appro our primary approach to acquisitions has been to focus on small tuck-in acquisitions, not necessarily uh, for scale per se, but to add capabilities or to expand into new geographies um, or to uh, add a platform capability to Cognizant, uh, deepen our, our industry expertise. And so that will continue to be our primary focus, is to look at uh, acquisitions in those areas but with a particular emphasis on, on digital. And it has, uh, you know, we've said now for, for some months that we intend to scale up the pace at which we do um, acquisitions. And I think you'll see us uh, do that in the, in the coming quarters. So uh, if I'm correct, Frank, uh, in 2016, the total digital revenues was about 23%. Uh, after the realignment is completed, by how much can that be scaled up? You know, uh, in, in uh, your right, Kritika, in, in Q2, uh, digital revenue was a little bit more than 25%, so it had gone up. It grew um, in the neighborhood of 30% year over year in, in the second quarter, so it's, it's uh, you know, a big part of our business now at uh, uh, over 25%. It's, uh, it's, you know, clearly growing faster than 
uh, than the rest of the company. Uh, and so, you know, I expect that uh, digital as a percent of our total company revenue uh, will continue to, to increase and it will continue to grow, but I'm not going to make projections of, of <laughs> you know, where it winds up at the end of the year. No, I get that completely. Okay, you know, the other point that I wanted to ask you, Frank, was the VRS program. Uh, uh, that is something that you've initiated in the last few quarters. Uh, 400 employees have uh, taken the VRS program. Is, will that continue now? Is that something you will continue in the next coming years? And if you could give some idea about the impact uh, in terms of cost savings of the VRS program that you have seen in the last few quarters? Yeah, so uh, Kritika, we, we ran the VRS in the second quarter uh, of this year uh, and we did it, uh, it's as you know, purely voluntary. Uh, we, we did it in response to a group of associates who, uh, many of whom had been with Cognizant for quite some time and were saying to us uh, that they would like to make a change in their career uh, do something different um, uh, with their lives and so on and so forth and we wanted to give them a, uh, uh, the option of doing that. So the VRS was uh, a voluntary program that, that, that we put in place uh, in the second quarter. As you said, about 400 uh, uh, associates around the globe uh, opted into that, uh, into that program. Um, and you know, as we said um, uh, in our uh, uh, second quarter um, results, uh, that results on an annual basis in about $60 million of savings to the company. Okay, fair enough. Uh, uh, the other point that you were talking about in the conference call, which I wanted to understand more in detail, is uh, reskilling and repurposing your workforce. So you have, over the last few years, focused on increasing uh, the U.S. workforce, increasing local talent across geographies. Uh, how will the numbers change? So currently, 75% of your employees, for instance, come from India. Will that pie now shift towards being equal between the two geographies, U.S. and India, which are where you refocus your workforce, at least? Yeah. Uh, Kritika, you know, I, I want to be clear on this. Uh, India today is uh, our largest uh, country location. Uh, it's, it continues to be the largest uh, hiring location uh, in the world. And I, I expect that that will continue to be the case uh, going forward. Mm. I don't think that the distribution of our workforce uh, will change meaningfully okay. over the coming uh, years. Okay. Um, we, we continue to hire digital talent around the world, not just in the U.S. Digital skills, um, particularly the skills that are needed close to the client, things like design skills and data science, uh, those things we will continue to, those skills we will continue to build close to the clients in the U.S., in Europe and in other parts of the world uh, mm. where we operate. And so we will ramp up uh, U.S. hiring, uh, European hiring, Asian hiring for those skills. Okay. Uh, but I don't think that that hiring will, will change the, the global distribution of our workforce meaningfully over the coming years. The, the, the news reports that had come out in terms of the kind of impact that you'd seen as a result of the annual performance separation were drastic. And at that point, you had clarified that. So I don't want to go too much into those details. But if you could give us a sense, what percentage of uh, uh, employees was this that were asked to go? Was that just about 1 to 1.5 percent? And that's the industry norm right now. Yeah. You know, um, we, um, uh, I, I want to be clear, you know, uh, we, we, did, we, did no, we did no layoffs uh, in the company. Okay. Uh, we, we, we ran through a performance cycle like we always do. Uh, du during the performance cycle, a small number, a very small percentage, low single digits hmm. uh, of, of, of our employees uh, make a decision that, you know, uh, the career, their careers are better uh, served outside of Cognizant. And that, uh, that's what happened in the second quarter. But that's no different, Kritika, okay. than what happens uh, at Cognizant every year. Okay, so I'm very glad you clarified that, Frank. So there were no layoffs in this one year in Cognizant. This was largely attrition that is something that's ongoing on an annual basis, correct? Absolutely. I can state that unequivocally. We did no layoffs. Okay. Uh, ever since the Trump administration has come, uh, Frank, you've heard, you've been at the epicenter of the talk of how the industry has shifted. The sense for most industry IT players, industry watchers is that uh, clients seem to have hit the pause button for some time. They're still watchful of how the administration will make changes in terms of policies, in terms of investment cycles. Uh, how much of an impact has that been for you? And uh, what is the outlook there? Do you expect, uh, you know, for instance, pockets like healthcare, education to shift now for IT players, given the client's uh, concerns across uh, uh, lack of clarity? Kritika, I would say that, you know, um, uh, our clients 
uh, have been operating against a backdrop of increased volatility for quite some time now. Yeah. Uh, if you go back uh, as far back as the financial crisis, um, you know, I, I would say that this has been a period of several years that has been characterized by um, uh, various dif different kinds of volatility. And I think most of our clients have come to the uh, understanding that uh, a, a volatile uh, environment is the new normal. Hmm. Uh, and so we see clients continuing to, to press forward uh, particularly with technology investments. I, yeah. Clients are understanding that they need to deploy digital technology. It's not an option anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, it's become the basis of competition in many, many industries. And so they are pushing forward with their investments in, in technology. And, and I think that's what uh, is driving um, our growth uh, and why you know, 2017 will be a, a, you know, a little bit better year than we had in, uh, uh, in the prior year. You know, Frank, since you've been so honest, the last question as far as the bribery investigation is concerned, you've already said that $27 million has been uh, uh, factored in. Uh, how much more is likely going ahead and what's the impact been like? How, how difficult has this period been for you? You've been very clear in terms of your disclosures, in terms of the transparency that the company has to maintain. How has this period been and how have you been able to tie through it? You know, Krithika, um, the, the investigation is ongoing um, in the... Um, uh, in, in the second quarter, uh, we disclosed that uh, the cost to the company uh, related to the investigation was approximately $8 million. Yeah. Uh, so we continue to, um, uh, uh, to, to work with the, um, to cooperate with the uh, U.S. Uh, government, the Department of Justice and the, uh, and the SEC and, and continue to, uh, to take the investigation um, uh, forward. Uh, you know, our commitment as, as it has always been is uh, to... Um, to, to comply uh, with um, uh, rules, laws, regulations uh, around the world in the countries in which we operate. We take that, uh, that obligation very, very seriously. Um, we have, um, we've taken the investigation extremely seriously uh, from the board level uh, all, all the way down uh, at Cognizant. Uh, and I think that uh, we are doing all of the right things uh, consistent with the values of our company uh, as, we, as we move forward. Okay, so the road ahead, Frank, if you had to describe it in one word, uh, uh, are, you, are you a bull or are you uh, cautiously optimistic about uh, the road ahead for Cognizant? Kritika, I'm, I'm always a bull. I think that the best days lie ahead for Cognizant. Uh, we, are in a, we have a tremendous market position. We've got um, uh, an environment where the world is becoming more technology intensive. Our services have never been more relevant uh, and I feel really good about the future. Thank you so much, Frank. It's always a pleasure to have you with us. And uh, perhaps the next time you're in India, we can do a face-to-face -face interview for sure. <laughs> Thanks a lot uh, once again for joining in uh, on this special show. Uh, that was Francisco D'Souza, the CEO of Cognizant, taking us through a whole lot of issues, a whole lot of clarity, a lot of confusion about the Indian IT sector, the Trump administration and the impact. But Cognizant is confident that the road ahead will be very positive. Thank you for watching this special show.